Today we'll explore the ultimate labrum rehab guide for baseball players. I'm Dr. Max Wardell, licensed physical therapist and biomechanist with the Overhead Athletic Institute. Let's dive in. The labrum is a cartilaginous disc that sits inside of the shoulder on the rim of the socket. It's made of this material that's similar to a rubbery style of material. This fibrocartilaginous disc around the shoulder has some, some give to it, but it can't withstand a ton of loads that are grinding on that labrum. And that's really what ends up tearing the labrum in a lot of our athletes. It's widely known that overuse Poor mechanics and weakness contribute to injury of the labrum, but the tough part is getting athletes back to the field after. So let's jump into the clinic and go through some of the range of motion exercises that are most important to stabilize that shoulder when you get towards your end range of motion in the deceleration phases and the acceleration phases of the throw. And then we'll dive into more of our strengthening routine. If you don't have full shoulder motion, we wanna work on that mobility component first. We've gotta get the upper back to extend, and we like to start with just a nice thoracic mobilization. We're gonna interlock those fingers behind the neck, pinch the elbows together. This goes somewhere in the shoulder blade region, not too low and not too high. And then as I've got those elbows pinched, I'm gonna kind of tuck my butt, keep my ribs pinned down, and I'm gonna go into an extension. Hold for a few seconds and come out. Find where you can get the best possible stretch. Remember, each motion segment only has a few degrees of motion, so you shouldn't need to go too far. Hold for a few, move quicker for a few. Move through that, spend three to five minutes working on that. Keep your foam roller here. This next one here, you're laying on your side, it's called the sleeper. And it, it's often limited in our throwing athletes and our overhead athletes, but it's not always implicated in everybody else. Keep that shoulder down to the floor, two finger pressure. Let that wrist come down, do a little bit of a stretch here. You're holding this position and just letting it stretch down. Hold this for a few minutes. Once that range of motion is equal and restored to the other side, you're good. You don't need to spend a lot of time on this. That's when we go into the strength stuff like we're gonna do now. So the first thing we actually start with is a warm up. There's a lot of different ways to warm up. This is actually one of those loop bands and we're just doing a side stepping. This gets the shoulders warmed up. It puts compressive load through the shoulders. There's a lot of different ways to warm up. This is one, you could even do something like a rower Something like that where you're just moving through range of motion, getting some, some blood pumping, and teaching the shoulder to stabilize a little bit. From there, we need to go into our targeted exercises. Targeted exercise should focus on the position of the shoulder blade. We want that shoulder blade to be positioned down and back, but we actually wanna tilt that shoulder so that the glenohumeral joint or the ball is centered in the socket and seated in the socket properly. You don't need a heavy band for this stuff. Even if you think you're really strong, let's start pretty light. You're gonna go into a forward hinge variation. Chest is lifted to the sky. Shoulder blades are pinned to the back. And from here, I'm gonna reach out as far as I can that way as I come into a lift. I'm gonna hold this position at the top for five to 20 seconds. The isometric contraction at the top has been shown in the research to do more to activate the muscles that surround the shoulder blade than just going through repetition. So I'm gonna hold, 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 hold and then come down. This exercise here, my back is flat, I'm reaching out, shoulder blades are pinned, I'm tucking those shoulder blades down as I do the exercise and reach out, elbows stay locked, and I'm gonna do that for probably 20 repetitions. You're gonna find if you're pretty weak, you're gonna have to rest at some point. Once you do that, you could move to a thicker band or you could stay with that light, light band. From there, we'll step down here to a little bit of a, of a heavier variation where now we're working on how the rotator cuff works to center that ball in the socket. Things to avoid, making sure you don't go out too far on any exercise, nothing too far behind your back, nothing too far over your head, nothing that gives your shoulder pain. So what we're gonna do is keep your elbow, I'm gonna show you with the left arm here, we're gonna keep that elbow actually out in front of the chest, get into a little bit of a lunge stance for my baseball players, closer to the position you throw from, Elbow is not too far back. It's actually out in front. That 
allows the shoulder to stay centered to a better degree. Elbow stays still, shoulders down. I'm tucking that shoulder blade down, pinning my ribs down this way, not letting them flare or lean through my low back. So everything is focused about the shoulder as far as I can go comfortably here without deviating my elbow. So a few repetitions. All the motion happens about the shoulder. Ribs are locked down, abdominals are tight. Once again, we like higher reps. Let's give that one anywhere from 15 to 30 repetitions. Then we're gonna move right into the opposite. We're now gonna have that elbow out in front. Athletic stance once again. And you're coming in. Now you might find this to be particularly easy. And if that's the case, grab that other band that you just utilized. We're gonna throw that around the humerus here and pull. Now we've got the band around the upper arm. We're pulling forward with our, our hand that we're not exercising, or our arm that we're not exercising, and then rotating in. That helps to turn off the big pec and lat muscles as I move through the exercise. Once again, the elbow is slightly out in front of my chest. It's at 90 degrees. We commonly see people drop the elbow and let it fall back. You don't wanna make that mistake. Let's hit higher repetitions once again until we get that stability and that proprioception developed to where we know where our arm is at in space. From here, we're gonna go onto the ground with a dumbbell. What we're gonna do here on the side is called a rolling sideline ER. A lot of people do this sideline ER like this and they don't really do it right anyways. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your back, support the neck here. The arm stays horizontal the entire exercise. That means you're fighting gravity throughout the entire arc of motion. So you're gonna start horizontal. I'm gonna push my elbow down, so I'm shrugging down. From here, I keep the weight off my chest. My arm stays horizontal as I roll. So this way, my arm is perpendicular to gravity the entire time, which means that I work hard the entire repetition against gravity versus when I normally do an exercise, if I come here, I'm only really working hard at the top. Here, I'm working hard the whole time. So I'm rolling nice and slow. We call it a 120 roll. So you roll as far as you can. My rotator cuff's already on fire. This is five pounds. I'm gonna encourage you to start with like two. And from there, we like to go into what's called a PNF exercise working on keeping that shoulder blade tilted back down and the kind of the bottom angle of the shoulder blade against the rib cage. For that, we get back into our band. We're gonna pin it down. I like to do this on the side. Here, you're gonna go thumb up and you're gonna lift on a diagonal, pin that shoulder blade down, keep that shoulder blade pinned down and come towards your other knee. So I'm coming down towards the knee, shoulders pinned down as I come into it. So one of the common faults there is people letting that shoulder kind of come roll forward and round into it. Whereas I'm taking that shoulder, not just back and together, but I'm actually trying to pull it down against my rib cage as I do the movement. If you're able to do this stuff, start here. If you feel like you aren't progressing the way you need to progress or things aren't going the way you need to progress, that's when you get in with somebody who's trained, a physical therapist, sports physical therapist optimally. Also, if you feel like you're not able to do these things, you gotta get assessed, get into some formal care right away. More advanced stuff to come on this channel, but also not just more advanced stuff to come on this channel, but we're, we've got programs that we've put together where we work with athletes every day in the clinic. We transfer that into an online program that you can do at home, and that's on our website, overheadathletics.com. Comment section below is for questions. If you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, let me know. As far as sets and reps, for all of you guys asking, start high, then go to higher load, lower repetitions. We'll see you guys in the next video.